Electric ducted fans are quieter, safer, and generally more powerful than the propeller of the same size. They're also remarkably heavy, inefficient, and only really work at high speeds. For my 750 gram high wing glider shaped drone, it's very clearly not the right choice. I tried it anyway to see if the modern EDF has any relevancy outside high speed jet models or obscenely large human sized aircraft. This is my fourth attempt at an Arduino controlled 3D printed drone. In the last couple of weeks, I've cut about 40% of weight and added traditional pitch and yaw control. The Mark IV uses a larger aspect ratio wing which sits high due to stability purposes. It's weighing in at around 750 grams, which gives it a thrust to weight ratio of about 1.6. It's still having trouble flying and I think it's safe to say that I can ditch the EDF design for good. The build process I use is talked about ad nauseum in previous videos. I CAD the design all in one file, split it up, print out the split parts, and then plastic weld them together. If you're interested, you should definitely check out the Mark I and Mark II videos. So after the last video, I set out to design a lighter glider style drone. To do this, I used cardboard as a main fuselage component and designed these massive wings that sat on top of the fuselage. I added the complete set of elevators and a rudder along with ailerons. I housed the EDF in the back by designing a coupler that fused the rectangular fuselage and circular fan. In total, this weighed in right around a kilogram, which cut out 200 grams from my previous design. There were still a lot of problems with this. The cardboard didn't bond well with the PLA, neither mechanically with things like screws, or through welding like with a 3D pen, or even through adhesives like super glue. As a result, the whole thing was kind of flimsy and fragile. It was still way too heavy for what it was designed for. And because of the heavy EDF and the two-stage coupler I made, the center of gravity was way back, which in turn forced the wing all the way back if I wanted to keep static stability when pitching. I did like the high wing design and the control surfaces worked out pretty well. And so I carried that over to my next design. This one, I went back to using all PLA plus. I made it a lot more compact by integrating the EDF right into the fuselage, adding some vents for air pull. I made a lighter tail design and had all the lifting surfaces above the center of the fuselage. I also kept the high aspect ratio glider wing design. This time I added skewers as rods through the wing, which held up the wings very nicely. The design came together very smoothly, the tail bolted on through the top of the fuselage, and the wheels are welded onto the flat surface on the bottom. I was shooting for 700 grams, and I think the final design weighed in at around 750. There were some bumps along the way, but I modified some of the parts, and so overall this plane is very structurally sound. Another thing to note is that while I used the Arduino in the Mark III version, I neglected to put it in the fourth. It would have been a pain to fit in the fuselage, and I wanted to see if it even fly even without the stability control. Using my code from the last two videos, the MPU6050 setup is able to match the servos for some kind of stability control. It is very elementary, but at least it's functional. Anyways, I'll go straight into the solid runway test. You can see the plane pitching up, but then very quickly rolling and crashing into the ground. This is about the farthest I've gone with this project. This test ended up breaking the wheels, and so I tried throwing it, but that went terrible. So the huge asterisk here is that I am very inexperienced with RC plane design. My manufacturing processes aren't very refined and I'm aware that my current design is probably still too heavy for what it needs, especially because there are lighter filament options out there. I don't know for sure if this would have worked with a larger prop, I would like to think it would have, but I hope this video can be an insight into the limits of some of the current propulsion technology we have. Perhaps more experience or investments into things like flight controllers or proven RC frame structures uh, would have gotten this off the ground. However, I am pretty impatient and my conclusion, which is probably pretty obvious, is that EDFs aren't suited for low speed and low weight applications. On top of the efficiency disadvantage, another huge issue I ran into is that with the hood of the fuselage on, the EDF wasn't drawing much air from the vents I designed and the performance fell off the cliff. It couldn't even move the wheels when I had the hood on and so I had to do my tests with the hood off and all the electronics messily taped down in the fuselage. So for an explanation of why EDFs are less efficient than props at low speeds, I'm not going to pretend like I know exactly why. It is important to remember that thrust is a function of both the speed of the air it moves as well as the volume of air that it displaces. And so while EDFs are able to generate high speed air because of their high power consumption and thus high RPM design, the size of a large propeller makes up for its slower speed simply because of the amount of air it pulls and then accelerates. And since it moves a lot slower, it's therefore a lot more efficient. I'm going to link two papers, one that tests EDF in UAVs and another that looks at a scaled application for next generation commercial aircraft. The results seem optimistic for both, but time will tell if we are really able to make current propulsive technology fit our needs. 
Anyways, I thought this would be a cool transition into looking back at some of the EDF designs I've made and trying to improve upon those. Even experimenting with next generation propulsive techniques such as ionic thrusters or whatever people are coming up with nowadays. Anyways, thank you for watching and following along if you have been.